All right, let's get into it. So we're talking about AV blocks, right? So I said, we're gonna talk about some kind of block along this conduction pathway somewhere. When it comes to AV blocks, okay, everybody look at me for a moment. When it comes here, let me just go to a blank screen. So when it comes to AV blocks, okay, AV blocks, okay, we have four main types of AV blocks. We have what's called a first degree, we have a second degree, and third degree, okay? So first degree, second degree, third degree. Whenever you're naming an AV block, you need to call it this. It needs to be a first degree block, second degree, and third degree. That's how you need to start with its name. That's like its first name, okay? However, for instance, in second degree, there are actually two types. They are named type one and type two specifically for second degree AV blocks, okay? Now this type one also has a different name known as Mobitz one. Depending on which book and what year it was published, they'll be named different things. And then type two is also known as Mobitz two. Everybody good with that part, okay? Now, only for second degree type one or Mobitz one, it also has this extra name and that name is Winky Bach, <laughs> named after Dr. Winky Bach, okay? And then we can have a third degree. Now, what am I saying here? So what are these situations? In a first degree block, so let's go over the names again. When it comes to AV blocks, they're either a first degree AV block, a second degree AV block, you would call it second degree type one, or Mobitz one, or Winky Bach, or you would say second degree type two, or Mobitz two. Now, Mobitz two doesn't have an additional name. It's just either second degree type two, or Mobitz two. Or you would say it's a third degree. Now, what are they? A first degree block is where you have a partial block, uh, so a first degree block, is where you're going to have a block between the, so it's gonna be between the SA node and the AV node, okay? So a first degree block is a block, so if we go back to our picture, a first degree block is somewhere along this pathway here. There's a block, but it's usually just before it gets to the AV node, okay? But everything else, still produce, it, it still cause the atria to depolarize and contract. But it's often going to be just before the AV node, okay? That's a first degree block. So it's going to be, let's say here, a second degree type one, Mobitz one, Winky Bach, it's going to be a partial block of the AV node. So it's partial. Some signal still is able to get through, but it's partially blocked. So this is like you're coming home from work and the bridge is out. Or no, the bridge is not completely out. It's just you're having to take a little detour. So you're still going to get home, but it's going to take you a little longer to get home because you got to take a different route home. So second degree type one is often a partial block of the AV node. Second degree type two is usually where the block is at the bundle of hiss. We have a partial block of the bundle of hiss. There again, some signal is still able to go through. On the other hand, a third degree block, a third degree block is where you have a complete block at the AV node. So no signal is able to pass freely from the atria to the ventricles, okay? First degree is where you have a block between the SA node and the AV node generally a little before the AV node. Second degree type one, the block is, you have a partial block of the AV node. Second degree type two is often a partial block of the bundle of Hiss. It could be the AV node, often the bundle of Hiss. And then a third block is what's called a complete block. So third, I mean, I'm sorry, a third degree. Let me say it right. A third degree is where you have a complete block. 
Now, let's talk about the characteristics of each. Let's go back to this first degree type. I mean, I'm sorry, <laughs> I'm confusing myself now. <laughs> let's go back to first degree. All right. In a first degree block, here's what you're going to notice. Let, first, let's draw a normal rhythm. There again, we always want to know normal. So we have a P wave, a PR segment, a Q, R, S, a T. Okay. And you may or may not see a U wave. Oh, by the way, if you do see a U wave, what does it mean? All right, so often a U wave, for instance, could could actually be due to things like uh, hypothermia, for instance. Um, it's not the only reason, but it's it's one of the situations that could cause it. So remember normal, right? So we've got our normal P, we've got our Q, R, S, and then we have our T. Okay, and what is our normal P, R interval, for instance? In As a part of a, a normal sinus rhythm, the P, R interval should be within one big box worth of time, and we know that one big box is 0.2 seconds, okay? However, in a first degree block, first, first degree AV block, the characteristic is, okay, we have a P wave, we have a QRS, we have a T, we have a P, a QRS, and a T. Everything look, is looking normal, right? It's looking like a sinus rhythm, however, what we notice here is that the, let's do this in a bigger color. Let's do it in red and a bigger color. What we notice here is in this first degree block, this PR interval is actually prolonged. It's still producing a QRS complex, but the PR interval is longer than it needs to happen. So for instance, it should have happened within one big box worth of time, but it's it took longer than that. So it's greater than one big box or greater than 0.2 seconds. So greater than two tenths of a second. Everything else is normal except the, the PR interval is prolonged. So here's what I want you to know. A first degree AV block has a prolonged PR interval, okay? Now, what do you do about it? Maybe nothing. If it's not causing any problems, it may just be, now it's not something that does that needs to be ignored, but I'm saying like in an emergency setting, we may not have to do any other treatment other than supportive care. So with a first degree AV block, we're gonna treat it if, if it becomes symptomatic, if it's causing, for instance, bradycardia, altered mental status, hypotension, things like that, then we may need to do things to speed up the heart rate. But generally speaking, we're, we're going to just do supportive care. All right, that's first degree. Now, let's go to second degree. We said that a second degree, what is it again? It's a partial block of, for instance, a second degree type 1, also known as Mobitz 1, also known as Winky Bach, is where you have a partial block at the AV node. Now, let's go into that one. This, this is a second degree type one. Here's what I want you to see. We have a P wave, QRS, and a T. We have a P wave, QRS, and a T. We have a P, a QRS, and a T. Now watch this. We have a P wave, and then, whoa, no QRS and T. And then we have a P wave again. So this is that example when I say in normal sinus rhythm, you need to have a QRS after every um, after every P wave and a P wave before every QRS. And I said, that's not the same thing. Because in this situation, we have a P wave. It is before a QRS, but it, it should, there should be a QRS right afterwards. And in this case, we have more P waves then we do Q, uh, QRSs. <laughs> Jumbling up my words now. <laughs> I'm starting to, I've never had a stuttering problem my whole life, but that was, <laughs> wow. <laughs> I think my mouth just needs a break. <laughs> All right, let's keep going. So second degree type one. Notice that we had a P wave here and we dropped a beat. We should have had a beat here. So let's put that there. 
Let's put where that dropped beat occurred. Okay? Here's what I want you to know. The PR interval, though, this first one, this is the PR interval. The second one, this is the PR interval. In fact, let's, let's draw this so you see it. So I'm going to put this one in, let's say, we'll just put it in purple. So the dropped beat occurred here. And the first beat, this is the PR interval. The second beat, this is the PR interval. The third beat, this is the PR interval. And then we have a P, but no R, so there's no PR interval there. And then we have a PR interval again, and then a PR interval. Here's what I want you to notice. This PR interval is progressively getting longer. So the PR interval says, hey, we're going to go longer, longer, longer drop. So whenever we have this longer, longer, longer drop, we say, we have longer, longer, longer drop. I think I have a winky buck. You got it? So longer, longer, longer drop. I think I have a winky buck. Now, <laughs> the, what is what is this? So in that situation, it was the pattern of longer, longer, longer drop. So for instance, the dropped beat in this example, we had three beats and then a dropped beat. But you could have four beats, you could have five beats, you could have six beats and then a dropped. But Either way, we're going to notice that the PR interval is getting longer, 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 and eventually it drops, right? Here's, here's the way you tell a second degree type one or a Mobitz one or a Winky Bop. Yes, you have longer, longer, longer drop. So I said you have a dropped beat. Remember, in a, in a first degree, there was no dropped beat. It was just a prolonged PR interval. In a second degree, whether it's second degree type one or second degree type two, Either way, in second degree, oh yeah, let's write that in. In second degree, one characteristic is you're going to have a dropped beat. Whether we're talking, here, let's write it, let's put it in the middle here. So in second degree type one, well, here, I'll write it both so you, in second degree type one or type two, you're going to have a dropped beat, okay? So let's go back to that. But the way you tell a second degree type one is go to the dropped beat. Go to wherever there is a beat or wherever there's a dropped beat. So go to the section where there should have been a beat, but there is no beat. Go to the one right before it. Go to the one, go to the beat right before the drop. And then look at the beat right after the drop. So what you're going to do is compare these two beats and look at the PR interval. And what you're going to notice is the PR interval right before the drop is really long compared to the PR interval right after the drop. Make sense? Let's say that again. In a second degree type one, also known as Mobitz one, also known as Winky Bot. The pattern is it's longer, longer, longer drop. We say longer, longer, longer drop. I think I have a Winky Bot. We're gonna go to the drop beat, go to the beat right before it, and compare the PR interval of that beat to the PR interval after the drop. And what the pattern is, is in the beat right before the drop, the PR interval is long compared to the one right after the drop. Make sense? Now, let's go to second degree type two. Let's change my color here. Give me, uh, here, we'll do orange. In second degree type two, what do we see? We have a P wave, QRS, T. P, Q, R, S, T, P, Q, R, S, T, P, um, hmm. and then we have a P, Q, R, S, T, right? Well, by definition, a second degree should have a dropped beat. So let's go ahead and put our drop in there. Boom, the drop is right there. Now let's look at the PR interval. Okay, so we're going to put this in orange so you can see it. This PR interval for the first beat is this long. Second beat is this long. Third beat is this long. Uh, the fourth one, we, it's not there. Let's go to the next beat is this long. If I compare the PR intervals in every one of these beats, what do I notice? It's staying the same. It's not getting longer. It's staying the same. So it's a constant PR interval, but we have a dropped beat. So Whenever we have a dropped beat and we're trying to figure out 
is it called second degree type one or is it second degree type two? Go to the dropped beat, go to the beat before the drop. Compare that to the beat after the drop. If the beat before the drop has a longer PR interval than the beat after the drop, it's called second degree type one. If you go to the drop and go to the beat before, compare this PR interval to the beat afterwards and compare those PR intervals, if they are the same, it's second degree type two. So let's label these. Uh, or second degree type one, Mobitz one, Winky Bach, has a variable PR interval, okay? And it has a dropped beat. Second degree type one has a variable PR interval and a drop beat. Second degree type two, on the other hand, has a constant PR interval and a dropped beat. Got it? So first degree has a prolonged PR interval. Everything else is normal. So how do you call a rhythm like that? If everything else is normal, but it has a first degree block, you can't call it a, you cannot call it a normal sinus rhythm because normal sinus rhythm does not have a first degree block with it. So the way you would name that one is a sinus rhythm with a first degree AV block. Okay. So you're going to call it its first and last name, and then you're going to put some extra stuff on it, like extra letters behind its name. So in this case, we would say a sinus rhythm with a first degree block, or you could say a Second degree type one, second degree type two. And then the final thing is a third degree AV block. So this last one is going to be the third degree. Now, what's the story here? All right, so let's go back to our heart for a minute. Everybody with me? <laughs> All right, so normally, let me just draw a, uh, a wave for you for a second. We're going to do this in green. So normally you have a P wave, QRS, T. You know the story. And then you have a P wave, a QRS, and a T. You have a P wave, QRS, and a T, right? That's normal. So let's, let's use people for these waves. So normally, for instance, let's say you got a whole family together. <laughs> so you got a whole family. The P wave, that's the, let's say, we'll call that the husband. Okay? Just go with me on this. We're going to make this example work, okay? We're going to say like the P wave is a husband in a traditional family. And then the QRS, who, who's real powerful, this is the queen. So this is the, the wife. Guys, I'm just trying to get brownie points wherever I can get them. <laughs> so we've got the QRS, which is the wife. And then closely followed by the, uh, closely following the QRS is the T wave. We're going to say that's the kids, right? So when the whole family is together, maybe the, let's say in a traditional family, let's say the husband's in charge, and then he's kind of driving everything else that happens in the family. So we have a P wave that sends a signal to the QRS, and then everything resets in the T wave. So we've got the husband, the wife, and the kids. That's a normal situation, right? However, things start going crazy around the house. <laughs> first, the signal, the communication is just partially blocked. Well, first, it takes a little longer for the message to start getting across, right? It, it, it gets across, but it takes a little longer. That's a first degree block where the PR interval is just a little prolonged. But everything is still together, right? <laughs> But then we go to second degree type one. Eventually, the message just drops off. So everything was going, <laughs> everything was going along. But this particular day, the message was, the communication was all interrupted. But it was partially blocked. Some of the messages were hitting, some of the messages were not. But eventually. It, it got through. That happens in both of the second degrees. It's just sometimes it gets dropped off. Sometimes the message just doesn't land that day. 
in a third degree block, this is where things have gotten, have taken a turn for the worse. So this is the family and they've decided to just kind of split now. So what's happening is the husband is up here in the atria doing his thing. And then the wife and kids are down here in the ventricles doing their thing. But there is no communication at all. All the communication has stopped. It is completely blocked. Okay. Now, so what happens though is sometimes the husband goes about and he just he's just doing his thing. Okay. And then the wife, she's down here. She and the kids doing their thing. But sometimes they end up going to the grocery store and the kids say, mom, look, there's dad. And what's that situation? That's where we have, for instance, here's, here's dad. <laughs> What an analogy, right? And then here's mom and the kids. This is where, for instance, the P wave, the P wave is that behind me, and then the QRS, they end up in the grocery store at the same time. But on the AKG paper, we can only see one of them, so we're going to see the stronger signal. So here's what you know in a third-degree block. This is where things have taken a turn for the worse. There's a complete block. The P wave is marching to its own beat. The QRS is marching to its own beat. But sometimes they may end up in the same place. So let's go to our third degree block. What? I like that, Joshua. Okay, good. Thanks. <laughs> okay, so here's what we see here. I'm going to put, since I did uh, P wave in green and I did QRS in purple, let's do it that way again. So we're going to say the P wave, watch this. Here's our P wave. Boom, boom, um, boom, boom. Now, if I were to kind of map out these P waves, and there should be one there. Here's what you notice. Notice that the distance between these P waves is staying the same. Right? Notice that this P wave, well, except right here, Okay, and this is where, oh, actually it is there. It, it is there. But notice how the P waves are just kind of do, uh, let's do it this way. The P waves are doing their thing. They're marching their, to their own beat. That's the husband doing his own thing. Now notice the QRS. The QRS, the wife is doing her own thing. The wife and the kids, you know, so we got the wife and the kids. We got wife and the kids. We've got wife and the kids, okay? Notice how the wife is doing her own thing. So stay with me. What we notice, though, notice this pattern here of the P to P interval is pretty short compared to the, let's say, the R to R interval, okay? It's not always this pattern, but a lot of times it is. So let's just focus right here on this part. In a third degree block or a complete block, the P is doing its own thing. The QRSs are doing their own thing, but it's not that the P wave is producing the QRS. So you're going to notice that pattern. The P wave, I mean, the P to P interval is constant. The R to R interval is constant. And then every now and then they will both end up at the same place at the same time. Okay. Here's the other thing you're going to notice in a third degree AV block. Let's clear all of this so we can see that one a little better. When we look at the overall rhythm from left to right, what do we notice? The rhythm is slow. So what kind of heart rate would we be looking at here? We're going to have generally a very bradycardic heart rate. Often we're talking like 20s, 30s, sometimes 40s, but it's definitely going to be bradycardic because if no signal is going through, the heart rate doesn't really have a choice but to slow down because you got to have, you got to have, the heart has to be paced in order to have a heart rate, right? So you're generally going to have a significantly bradycardic heart rate. So what are you going to do about this stuff? Well, a first degree block, it's just a prolonged PR interval, but as long as we have normal complexes, otherwise we're, we may not do anything. We may just kind of watch the patient. Now, let's say we have a second degree type one. Okay, the PR interval is starting to, to get longer. 
So the, the heart rate is starting to slow down. We're probably going to need to do something to speed it up. Generally for a second degree type one, um, let's say a medication like atropine, a muscarinic antagonist to block that parasympathetic response would actually cause the heart rate to go up. So generally for things like a second degree type one, you may be able to safely use medications like atropine. Second degree type two, you may or may not, I mean, atropine may or may not be effective. In a third degree block, we need to go immediately to pacing. So we're generally going to do transcutaneous pacing, but ultimately they need a pacemaker, okay? Because their heart rate is too slow to maintain cardiac output. So in a third degree block, we're gonna do pacing. Any questions on that? Okay, moving right along. <laughs> All right.